Um, Not yet. Okay. All right, you're all set. All right, good evening. I'm calling the July 23rd, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 6.30. Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the town committee. I will now call on each committee member by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Lisa Brewer. Yes, I can hear you and I can see you. You just can't see me. Sorry. Okay. Darcy Dumont. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Evan Ross. Yes. George Ryan. Yes. Those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee member connections, and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until we're reconnected. We request that everyone be patient with the process. Um, it does not appear that we have anyone for public comment, because there are only eight participants, and that's the eight of us. Um, we have another public comment possibility at the end, so if someone shows up, we can ask at the end. Um, okay, so we don't have any action items, no appointments tonight, nothing. We, we have devoted this entire meeting to finalizing our review process, um, and if there's time, starting discussion about adopting a process to guide TSO in reaching out to stakeholders. Um, to review just very briefly, because we've done this quite a few times now, the background on this, TSO started looking at a draft review process that was based on one initially referred by the town meeting advisory committee, that documents in our packet. Um, so that was, um, that was referred to the town council, which recommended setting up a resident town council advisory committee to look at the pros and cons of proposed measures. That's what that proposal was proposing. That proposal was referred to the community resources committee, um, which modified it to omit the part about creating an independent advisory committee, uh, but kept the guidance on readiness for review and outreach to stakeholders. The CRC uh, does use that process now in some form or another, um, and also referred it to us, the Town Services Committee, upon our creation. So we're going to look at that, uh, hopefully to try to finalize it tonight. I'm going to try, the, the meeting is scheduled to be over at 8.30. I'm going to try to stop at eight o'clock to do a time check. Um, please, somebody please remind me if I get off track. Um, I want to be able to go over the draft revised work plan before we leave today. Um, so that's kind of part of what we're doing. Um, and um, before we look at the, I took the, the review process that we looked at at the last meeting, tried to make the changes that we agreed on, um, uh, but before we look at that, I would like it if we could just pull up the town council rules of procedure. So, because they're very much related to what we're doing, if we could just look at rule eight, Point one, and um, uh, so under non-emergency measures, which is basically what we're probably talking about in our process, uh, proposed under 8.1a, non-emergency measures, proposed bylaws and other measures, um, th these are the, the requirements for bringing a proposed bylaw and other measures. It needs to be introduced in writing, to be limited to one subject which shall be stated, clearly stated in the title, three, bear the name of the sponsor, four, be in the form necessary for final adoption. 
So a proposal to adopt, amend, or repeal a town bylaw shall set out in full the portion to be so adopted, amended, or repealed with additions indicated in bold and or underline and deletions indicated by striking through. Any council action that provides for the imposition of a fine or penalty shall be in the form of a proposed bylaw. Each proposed bylaw shall include a statement of authority for the council to act with appropriate section of the charter or mass general laws clearly cited. Um, and proposed resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, or citations shall be introduced either by a council councilor sponsor or by a group petition or by initiative as described in charter section 82B 8.3 and 8.5. So I am not going to read the part about emergency measures, um, but I did want to go over 8.1A. And so 8.2 has to do with referral of measures, which is relevant to us because we get the majority of what we do is referred to us by the council. So 8.2a uh, says the council may refer any measure to a council committee to a council committee that should be singular, I believe, the town manager or town multiple member bodies, which shall constitute a request for a report on such matters. The council shall specify a time period for a committee to report back. So that's Based, that's a lot of what we do. We get things referred to us by the council and um, um, the council committee shall report back on any measure referred to it under section C, D, E, or below within 45 days of referral. So that is sort of the default, 45 days. So, and then it talks about financial measures under C. Uh, which we don't get because we are not the finance committee. Town manager appointments, we do get. Um, bylaws, uh, E states all measures proposing bylaw changes shall be automatically re referred to the GOL committee. If a measure proposing a bylaw change is referred to another committee, in addition to the GOL committee, the time for the GOL committee to report back to the council should not begin until the other committee has completed its review and made a recommendation on the measure. And the president will notify the council of the referral at the next regular council meeting. So um, I'm not going to talk about F because that is not something that we normally do. Um, and then G says, the president may refer a measure to the appropriate council committees upon receipt if that measure is deemed to contain a minor request for action or is time limited. A minor request for action includes but is not limited to revisions that do not change policy. A time limited measure shall be a measure that requires the council to act within a period of time which if referral waits until the next regular council meeting could endanger the appropriate consideration of the measure and committee uh, or the president shall notify the council of all referrals at the next regular council meeting. A council committee may choose to take up a matter brought to the council's attention and within its jurisdiction without formal referral from the council if it notifies the council at the next regular council meeting after it takes up the matter. So this all pertains to the town services and outreach committee. Um, I don't think we need to look at 8.3 and I think we can actually pull up our um, proposed review process, which is, um, like I said, it's just a, a new draft of what we came up with at the last meeting. Oh, I'm bringing that up, pardon me. <laughs> I, am, I am pulling up a Word doc so that I, this is a plan, is that I'm going to be able to work on it if necessary. So, um, can we see it? Okay. All right, um, 
So the document is color coded. And the coding indica is indicated by green is the part that um, I thought we had a general consensus on in the last meeting. Yellow is just a little bit of new language. And red are areas that we talked about at the last meeting, uh, but I don't think we agreed on. So I thought maybe we could start with the green. And if you have it, if you have the document that you can pull up on your own, that would be good too. Um, if I thought that maybe the first thing we could do is look at the green and see if if you all agree that this is language that we had consensus on. Uh, Evan, do you have a comment? Yeah, sorry, my SharePoint has like not been really working the past week, so that, oh, that was you know, you're not shaking your head at me. You're shaking your head at SharePoint. That's good. Um, so um, why don't we take um, Lynn, could you could you scroll up just so that we make sure that we have the title too? Um, and um, one thing that uh, that I would comment about is um, the the title refers to the definition of measure in the charter, and I don't know if any of you looked that up. But that is a pretty darn incomprehensible definition in the charter. And so I'm not sure we want to refer to it because, because it doesn't even track the list of items that we're listing here. It, it did occur to me that we could say proposed process for review of non-emergency measures in parentheses except town manager appointments or something like that. So that it would be everything except emergency measures and town manager appointments. Um, but uh, the, 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 I don't think it makes sense for us to, to, um, to even mention the, the definition in the charter. It doesn't track what we're saying. And I can read it to people if they want to hear it. It's, um, it is, the word measure shall mean any bylaw, order, resolution, or other vote or proceeding adopted or that the town council might adopt. So any thoughts on that? Uh, and if anybody, if there's someone who would like to be in charge of uh, watching for hands, that would be good. Alyssa? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand because I just really have a hard time with that term measure because it's never been meaningful in Amherst before and it hasn't suddenly developed meaning. And so um, I wonder if one way around it too is also to just say like, right at, even though it's so beautifully laid out and I hate to mess with the structure, but to just say kind of at the beginning, note, this does not apply to town manager appointments and it, did you say non-emergency measures? Because I, I nobody's reading the title, honestly, in terms of like what all the thousands of things are that are in there. And so avoiding using the term measure whenever possible, I think is good and mentioning right at the beginning of the document that this does not cover town manager appointments because at this point it doesn't I think that would be just really useful so people know oh that's not this but I mean we're not going to get a resolution sent to us so it doesn't matter that the concept of measure includes the word resolutions right so if you have a specific suggestion Mine was say, note, this does not apply to and town manager appointments and 
whatever, however else you want to categorize the things it doesn't apply to. Where would that go, Alyssa? Like I said, I hate to mess with the, with the way it's set up, but it feels like it should be near the beginning. Um, maybe it's a subheading. I, I, I'm not, I don't know. The heading's super long, so I don't know what's the right answer. May, oh, let's see. Um, should it be down, should it be? I mean, it should be before people get very far, right? Because they shouldn't be looking in here to see if this is how we oh. talk about town manager appointments. Now, why, it, am I sharing my screen? I'm seeing the green. No, this um, is Lynn's screen. I am, um, and I don't I, think this is a Word document, so I can't do yeah, much. Can I, can I, could you allow me to share my screen? I thought I, thought I was doing that, but that, uh, there we go. Okay, so. Well, I just wanna make a comment here, Darcy. For me, the most important thing is that you said draft revised on the date, because I have put all my papers in front of me and I don't know when they were first presented and which draft or which version it is. And it's just, they all are about the same thing. But this one, I could tell what it was because it had exact date of when it was last touched and dealt with. So I think that's good. I, I just think here, we have to here. find some way to make sure that we know what document we're talking about. Um, of course, the green helps on this one too. Um, are we, are we okay with, um, the title? Do we want to, it's, it struck me that if we, if we keep in the part about, is this a public health or safety emergency? The only reason to ask that question is if this process won't apply to that, right? Or not? I, it's useful to have it there because if it is, then we say, well, that's not what we're doing here. Isn't that right? You said that this method is not to be used for public, for emergency things. Yeah, so, so asking I, is an emergency I, is a way of keeping us on target. Okay, maybe we should go back to the title after we do the body because that will, it, what, we, what we determine about the body may affect the title. So um, if we look at this, uh, why don't we look at this section, preamble down through number two here. And does anybody have any, any, um, Do you disagree that we had consensus on that? Or are we okay with it? That sounds like, I don't hear anyone objecting to anything there. Okay, so moving down to just, just looking at the green part. All right, I am getting a really good feeling about this. Uh, okay, so I'm 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 hearing or not hearing anything. So I'm I'm hearing that we do have consensus on the green part. Okay, so let's go back and just look at the red parts one at a time, mm -hmm. um, and see if what people think because there was some discussion. And we'll go. We'll do the title last uh, after we've done everything else. Um, so there was a question I think George brought up at the last meeting as to whether we should be asked why we would be asking is this a public health or safety emergency. So any comments about that? Whether. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to assume that if there are no comments that we should leave it in. I, I guess if I can just speak up, I, 
I guess I just need some help as to, um, okay, let's say the answer is yes or, or no or whatever. I mean, uh, so the answer is yes. So what, what, is it, what, what does that mean? And what does the answer mean? Um, you you go to a different not? policy. I'm sorry? We you follow a different, different policy? Because policy, this policy, she said, though we haven't you know, put it near the top, that it was for non-emergency measures. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that, but that's up to this committee. Yes. Yeah, but that, would be, that would be a reason why like, we'd have some kind of a accelerated process. We might not have to have a preliminary presentation. We might be able to, you know, we would do the same things, but faster. Okay, and that's why it's here under timing issue. Right, but so, but like I said, it's not, it doesn't really make sense to have this question unless somewhere we say that this process doesn't apply to non-emergency measure or to emergency measures, right? I see no problem with redundancy, but you know, I don't write this kind of stuff, okay? So this is not my natural area, but redundancy often keeps people from making mistakes. There are hands up, Darcy. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, Evan. Yeah, so I think maybe some of us are viewing this in different ways. Um, I, I never anticipated we would have one process for non-emergency and one process for emergency. I, my understanding, which I think is what Darcy just articulated, was if we get something that we determine is a public health or safety emergency, then that influences the timing of the measure, right? And so, for instance, for the surveillance bylaw, we sort of got kind of a preliminary presentation, but said, well, this isn't an emergency necessarily, so we can hold off on, on getting this, the full presentation later, where if it was an emergency, we'd say, maybe we even need to schedule a sooner meeting mm -hmm. to do this. So my understanding is all of number two is timing, and part of that is how quickly do we need to act, and A, about when do we need to act to comply with the mm -hmm. charter or the referral vote, but C is also when do we need to act based on how pressing the issue is. And so maybe that's a different way to phrase it if we're getting hung up on the word emergency is, you know, oh. it's a pressing issue. I don't know. I don't really know how to Smith it, but that, that's how I viewed it. Um, and then just while I have the floor, I, I would be curious to know why um, 3A is under 3 and not 2, because that also seems like a timing issue because to me two is all about what's our time determining as a committee the timeline for this um well before we get to that <clears throat> is there a consensus that we should um leave in is this a public health and safety emergency yes yeah are we okay with that george i'm okay yeah Let's see if I can figure out how to, where are the colors? Do we know where they are? Evan, do you know the answer to that? They're under home. Okay. That changes the color of the words. So changes the color of the highlights. Okay. Uh, wait a minute here. This is this is clearly going to be a problem. <laughs> Let's see. All right. This is going to be a different color green. Are we going to be able to tolerate that? Okay. Oh, that. Uh, why is that? All right. Let's go ahead while I'm trying to do that to the next one. Um, oh, how did that happen? What need the proposed measure addresses? I have to hit escape to get that little pen to go away. Okay. Thank you. Um, Alyssa put this in, what need the proposed measure addresses. George, uh, 
doubted that. And I'll have to say that I went back and forth myself about that. And I have kind of come down on George's side of thinking that at a preliminary presentation, we shouldn't really be getting into the substance of the matter. Um, so I guess I would, I'm, I'm leaning in that direction myself. Alyssa has her hand up. Yes, Alyssa. So I think we're going to end up torturing each other a lot about what language means. And so to me, if you can't say what need this bylaw, for example, does as part of your preliminary presentation, then you don't belong talking to us at all. I'm not talking about like a four page need of, you know, research paper. I'm talking about we need to do this because X, Y, Z is happening in our town this year, last week, next month, or because I saw it someplace else, or because we know that in a year we're going to be looking at surveillance purchases or something. There should be a basically one sentence, why do you want us to do this? And then all the other things, because honestly, everybody gives us things with like paragraphs of reasons, and you have to get down to like page three till you find out what is the need that needs to be done via this method, right? Versus going and getting a resolution or going through a different process. So I'm just asking for a one sentence, what's the need that you're trying to fulfill here? What's your purpose? That, that is absolutely critical at the very beginning. It shouldn't get past the very, you can't. And so I think we're just talking about language differently because you can call it something else if you want, but if you can't tell me why you're bringing this to me without giving me a three page research paper on wage theft, then I, I don't know why we're doing this. It's a soundbite that says why we're doing, why this needs to be done, why we're doing it now. Other thoughts? Evan? Yeah, I guess, I guess I would probably lean towards Alyssa's position in this one. Um, and, and I guess one of the things that as a council we've never actually grappled with is you know, how do we bring every measure um, and every bylaw that comes to us to a full council vote? Um, and so far we have, right? Um, but to some extent, if to me, if someone can't demonstrate the need for a particular proposal, um, I would question why we would then go through the trouble of organizing a formal presentation and using our, our valuable committee time um, to fully vet it if, if we can't even see sort of a need for it. And so it would be a courtesy, but we're not really here to do courtesies, right? Um, and so I guess that, that's where I kind of fall on it is, uh, I kind of want to know from the outset, why is this thing being proposed? What's, what's it trying to do that, that's necessary before I can see committing our committee's schedule and time to a particular proposal. So I, I, I would lean on the side of keeping it. How, how would, in what form do you think that, since the sponsors are not present at the preliminary presentation, um, how, how is it going to be demonstrated? Well, if that if that's towards me, I, I would just say I would expect that any proposal would come much like the ones we got from um, surveillance and from wage theft, not just with the actual language of the bylaw, but with also with a brief memo. And for both of those, they, they did that, right? Both um, surveillance and wage theft were accompanied by a memo that very clearly articulated what the need was for that. Um, I, I would imagine, I would hope that anyone who wanted to see their measure passed would accompany the actual language with some form of a memo describing that. And if they didn't, I, I would probably say, I, I send it back and say, you, we, you, we need something from you. We can't just have raw language. Alyssa? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking of too. I mean, I, I, I get now that it, makes more sense if you think about, well, what's the practical application of this? So you could do it a bunch of different ways. One is that you as chair could say, oh, you want to, you're going to bring something to us because right, they're not just going to show up randomly at a meeting. 
So you want to bring us something? Here's, here's a form. Here's our process. Here's a form we use that says, you know, tell us a couple sentences about why this needs to be done now. Because it might very well be that somebody's so early in the process that they just want to tell us why something's so important. And if we say, yeah, you're right, that's important, then they'll go back and flesh it out. And so, and it doesn't have to be a two page memo. You know, it was much more organized with both wage theft and surveillance. It doesn't have to be that detailed. It can be more basic than that. That's why it's at the very introductory stage to say, what need are you trying to fulfill? And if somebody brings us, um, we can all think of some things we get emails about that we haven't really put on an agenda yet at the town council level is if they put that on the form, then we can say, you know, that doesn't really fit in our committee or, you know, actually so-and-so is already working on something like that. But the way they find that out is they're contacting you. They're not just showing up randomly. You're sending them this process and you could also, we could have a form that basically says, tell us in a couple of words, or you could just say that in an email, tell us in a couple of words. And then it gets developed, as you say, at a later proposal. Like I'm saying, they don't have to have their entire bylaw written before they come to us. They can just tell us what the need is that they're trying to fix. And then we move on from there. Um, Dorothy. Um, I have a question. Uh, I guess I'd assumed that when something comes up that we talk about it, we have a discussion. And that part of that discussion is what we feel and think about things. And we might decide that something that has come to us is frivolous and that we don't see the point of um, going into it much further. Are we allowed to do that? You're asking. Evan, Evan's saying yes. I would hope so. I hope Evan's right. Um, yeah, no, I think that that's, that's part of the question of we're ask, what we're asking right now. George? Um, I thought earlier we had simply addressed the question of how this uh, fits within the charge of the committee. And maybe that's dropped out or maybe, I mean, I'm, I've got so many documents in front of me now. There's so many colors. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to lose it. But um, I thought earlier we had raised the question or maybe this is, this is now the new version of it, which is simply, you know, how does this relate to our charge? Why is it before us in that very simple way? The need part, I mean, I'm not going to go to, you know, go to the mat on this, but, you know, I could easily imagine <clears throat> a long debate <clears throat> between us about whether this is necessary or not. Um, imagine somebody's bringing some kind of, uh, you know, proposed changes to how we do policing. And, you know, maybe I think that, you know, there's no need for this at all, but lots of other people think there is. So that seems that comes later in our discussion. Right now, I just, we just want to know, um, how does this fit, you know, why is it in front of us? Not what, you know, whether I agree with it or like it or anything else, but just why is it in front of us? Why is and, this here? Okay. Yeah. And so how does it fit within our charge? I might personally think this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and I hope it dies an early and painful death. But, but that is, you know, uh, comes later when we talk about, I take it, it's content. I thought here right now, we're just trying to set the stage. But um, maybe, I'm, maybe, as Alyssa said, this is just, you know, different ways of interpreting the language. Uh, maybe she also agrees with me that at this point, it's not really about whether you think this thing makes any sense or not. It's just about whether it belongs in front of us, mm -hmm. given that we're the TSO, blah, blah, blah. Um, but those seem to be very different questions, and I am a little wary of a question here that seems to raise the issue of, do you like this or not? And mm -hmm. I, I just not sure I want to talk about that yet in the preliminary. Um, but maybe we do. So I, I'm, it's a question. I don't, but maybe the majority here thinks, yeah, let's have a debate about what we think about this right in the preliminary session, where mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out why is it here? I know what's the timeline. Uh, what do we know about, you know, what's the information? And then we throw in, and what do you think about it, by the way? You think it's a good idea? Well, I could maybe spend four hours on why I think it's a horrible idea, but that seems like a different issue. Yeah, I would agree with George. Um, Alyssa? I, I agree with George too. I mean, again, I'm just saying, tell us what the basic point of this is. Mm -hmm. The conversation that Dorothy's talking about, some of what George is talking about, that's as the whole thing unfolds. But when they first come to us, and we say, you know, actually, 
that is a dog park situation and you want to go talk to so-and-so about the dog park and they go, Oh, okay, well, thanks anyway. And moving on. Um, or you may not realize that as chair, but as we talk about it as a group, just to figure out, does this fit within our purview? Then we find a better, a better way of solving their problem for them by sending them off to the right people. But it is not, it, it absolutely is true that we are not going to make judgments at that initial point based on those two or three sentences they put together, mm -hmm. whether or not this is a valuable thing to do or whether we're ever going to support it. We're just asking, what need are you trying to fix? I'm trying to avoid people bringing us draft bylaws that are draft bylaws without covers. I know that we haven't, that didn't happen here yet. It will happen in the future if we don't make it clear that we're just looking for some basic preliminary information as to why I, this is the place to deal with it. And if it's not, we'll help them find the right place. It's not about whether or not we like it. So Alyssa, it, why is that not covered by the question why the measure is within the TSO charge? It is. Because people don't have any idea what's in the TSO oh. charge and what we think it means versus what each of the five of us thinks it means, what mm -hmm. all the counselors think it means, and what the public thinks it means are completely different things. Mm -hmm. We have to decide if it's inside our charge or not. It's not up to the, to the other counselors to decide that. It's not up to the public to decide that. We'll have to decide that. Right. But in terms of like understanding what they're even trying to do, that's how we find out if it's mm -hmm. inside our charge. If we don't have any idea what they're trying to accomplish, we don't even know if it's inside our charge. Yeah, um, I, I'll have to say that I, it occurs to me that, that uh, these things initially come and uh, get referred to us. We, we, for example, the surveillance technology bylaw, we all voted to refer that to us. Um, and so I'm wondering if there should be something earlier before the referral to make sure that it's going to the right place. But anyway, um, uh, I think we should probably try to figure out what we're going to do on this. Um, we might need a vote um, because it doesn't look like we have consensus. Um, so uh, I, feel like I, I, it makes me nervous because it feels like we, it could be easily misinterpreted to mean that we're looking at content and making judgment at this time. Um, so, um, I would, uh, I would move that we take out 3B. Is there a second? So we just pick in our heads, which one is ours? All right. So, I guess we're going to leave it in then. Um, George? Oh, I'm sorry, George. <laughs> I'm sorry, George. It's hard to do four things at once, I agree. Um, <laughs> I, just, I would suggest changing the language, but I, I, as I said, I'm not going to die over this, but I do agree with Darcy that the way it's written is ambiguous and could easily lead to, in some future iteration of this committee, or even you know, next month and on this committee to a long and hoary debate about why this thing makes sense or doesn't make sense and do I like it or don't I like it. And even though somebody says that's really not what we're supposed to be talking about, uh, the way this is written it seems perfectly reasonable to raise that issue. Seems to me the question simply is, uh, given our charge, why is this in front of us? And it should have a simple answer. And if we can't come up with an answer, then um, it clearly doesn't belong in front of us and we should send it somewhere else or, or whatever. And our, I think there are some things that are referred to us by, by, the, by the council, but there are things that have come to us that, uh, you know, uh, come from different sources. And I think as Mandy's uh, 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 memo that I was reading the other day suggested, there's some things we have to deal with whether we like them or not. Um, so it's not as if we, you know, there may be times we're going to have something in front of us that we all think is really, you know, why are we doing this? But the, the charter requires us to do it. Um, and so, again, I just think of this at this stage um, that, for instance, A should be moved up 
to two, because it's a simple timing question, and B should be something to the effect of this question, you know, you know, given our charge, um, you know, how does this apply? How does this fit within our charge? And that should have a simple answer and it shouldn't be a big long debate. Um, but if, you know, majority rules, and if, if the majority of you want to leave it this way, with the understanding that that's what the question means, though we all agree that it's ambiguous, um, fine. Um, but I would prefer just having something referring to the charge for B, which I would suggest would then become A. Um, that's my thought. So, but we already have the question, George. About the charge? Why the measure is within the TSO exactly. charge. Exactly. So your thought is it's already there. Um, thank you. That's right in front of me. Um, and so it should just be taken out. And A should, be, I think, be moved up to two. And the next question would be something about existing bylaws or whatever. Um, and so I guess the, those of you who feel it needs to be stay here, um, uh, well, you need to make the case. You've made it. Um, so do, is, do, I, do I hear, wait a minute, There's a lot of other comments here. Dorothy? Okay. I think that both George and Alyssa have said something that's important. Yes, we want to know why the measure is when, was it within the TSO charge, but as Alyssa says, not everybody knows what that is. So I would say, why is the measure, is the, why is the measure, get okay, rid of that is, within the TSO charge, semicolon, what is the need for the measure? Because everybody doesn't know whether it's within the charge. You're asking, this is, the sheet you're going to give or some version of this is the sheet you're going to give to somebody who says, oh, I've got something I want to bring before you. And you want them to at least respond to some of these questions. But whether it is within the TSO charge is not something that is necessarily easily understood or common knowledge amongst a lot of people. So we do want to know that, but we're going to be the ones who determine it. I say, say that and then semicolon, say what is the need. So at least the person who's presenting has some idea of putting down something, and then we'll deal with it. I'm having trouble editing here. Um, so, uh, Alyssa. So I'm, I'm feeling a little poked at there, George, because I did make a case. And you're saying, well, I've made my case. I, I'm, I'm starting to feel like this is really frustrating, and we're like on paragraph one. So I want two separate questions. I don't care what order they appear in. We, as Dorothy just said, have to determine if it's within our charge. Nobody off the street can determine if it's within our charge. We might not even agree among the five of us if it's within our charge, much less with the other counselors who are bringing something to us. That is completely separate from what the need it is that is trying to fulfill. If it's about traffic calming, it's within our charge probably. Does that make it not, I'm not talking about whether or not it's a good idea. I'm talking about, is it an idea we can act on? So if someone says, I want speed bumps on every single residential street, we aren't going to say go away, but it is within our charge. We want them to put together a couple sentences of why speed bumps on every residential street is something the TSO should be looking at right now. Yes, it's absolutely going to be within our charge, but that doesn't mean that it's filling a need that we agree with, which we will decide later in the process. The only way we can decide that at any point in the process is if the people tell us why this matters. That's mm -hmm. all I'm asking for. Why do you want to do this? What is the purpose of doing this? I want to make it easier for kids to walk to school. That is a perfectly good purpose. Is it related to something associated with traffic, sidewalk, speed bumps? Then yes, it's within the TSO charge, but that's not up to them to figure out. If it's not something, I just don't understand why we're arguing over the fact that we can't, it's somehow rendering judgment to expect someone to be able to explain in one sentence why it is they feel the need to bring something forward. I just, why is that judgy or unreasonable on our part? We're not going to argue with them. We just want to know why they're doing it. But you're, you're suggesting that we might decide not to act on it based on what 
their answer is. It might need to go someplace else. They might be asking the, the, they might, see, here's the thing. If you put it in semicolons, then what matters is that it's within the TSO charge. To me, what matters is that we help people find the right place for the thing they wanna do. So if they bring us something that they think belongs to us, because obviously they wouldn't call you if they didn't think it belonged to us, and they bring us something, they make a couple sentences, and you bring it to us, and you're like, I don't know, they, they said they wanna do this. It sounds kind of like it's in our charge. Is this the right place? Oh, as it turns out, something's being worked on over here by staff already on that. Have they talked to those people yet? No. Well, they might want to talk to them as they're continuing to develop this. That's all I'm talking about. I'm not saying, is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I'm saying simply, I think it was half an hour ago, Evan said, define what the problem is that you're trying to solve with this whether George and I and Dorothy and Evan and you all think it's a good solution is not relevant. We're just trying to see if this is the right venue for developing the solution or if we can help them find some other spot for it. We're not sending them away. We're not prejudging. We're just trying to help them help themselves by get it moving along. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know how much more time we want to spend on this, um, but so if we could keep it brief, that would be good. Evan? Yeah, so to me, I, I agree with a lot of Alyssa, although I, we might not be on exactly the same page, but to me, this is like, the whole point of three is what's our starting information, right? What, what's our starting point and, and what we have about this so that we can move on to step four, which is what do we feel like we need? And to me, what's now 3B is like basic information that you would want at the outset. So I almost would maybe edit it because Alyssa said something, which was, what does this hope to accomplish? I would almost say, what's the need and what does it hope to accomplish? Because to me, that's like just basic information. It, it's, it's weird for me to be told what existing bylaws exist, what are the best practices from other communities um, without first being told what this is even trying to do and why it's trying to do it. To me, that's just basic starting information and not for us to, to render judgment, but just to say, this is the starting point. If the wage theft bylaw came to us and it said, um, this is within the charge because it has to do with procurement, we need to talk to Anthony Delaney, and it sort of relates to responsible employer and TIFs, and um, it's based on Lowell and Northampton, but they never actually told me why they were proposing it and what it hopes to accomplish. That's how am I supposed to understand any of that information? And so that, that's why I think it's important. And I would actually add maybe that, what does it hope to accomplish or something like that? And again, like Lisa said, one or two sentences is sufficient. So George. So uh, I hear it. I, I think you're making both Evan and Alyssa making excellent points. Um, is it, would it be solve the problem by simply moving uh, B uh, in roughly the language it has up to simply number one? Because it's sort of like the most basic starting question. Why is this in front of us given the TSO charge and what specific need is it uh, trying to address? What community need or just you just say, what need is it addressing? And that would be number one. And then number two is timing. And number three is information that we need from the sponsor or information we need to gather. Um, would that solve the problem? I guess I, I, I'm hearing Alyssa's point and I'm hearing Evan's point. And I think, I think we all agree that at some level we need to understand why this thing is in front of us in terms of what it hopes to accomplish. Should that be part of number one? Just, you know, and, just in a certain and, those are the two questions. Or do people feel, no, it really belongs under three? And if it's three, then we'll leave it where it is. But I'm thinking, why not just at one? Uh, these two questions need to be ans answered right out of the gate. So okay. put it up with one. But we still want to know what, why the measure is within the TSO charge, right? You think combine those two things. Right, which is what one says. As you pointed out to me quite correctly, it's right there in number one. And now we have something else in 3B. Uh, and I think we're all agreed uh, as to what we think 3B is trying to get at. I think Alyssa's right. I think Evan's right. Um, but why not just put it up with number one? Just why the measures within TSO charge? I'm what sorry? It, well, how would you edit it? And what I would say specific need does the proposed measure address? I would support that. Sure. 
I don't see why that's better, but. Um, Darcy, Darcy, Dorothy has a hand up. Dorothy. Can't get the damn thing. Okay, I think we have enough information here for the for the revision. Uh, I, I don't think we need to sit and go through each word at this moment. Um, I agree, it is the first question. I mean, it made me think of, you know, the first question at Passover, why is this night different from all other nights? I mean, that's the first question. So let's put a good first question. Um, because I think why is a measure within the TSO charge? I think that <clears throat> that is for us to decide. I think it's off-putting for people from who are coming to us. And I think we've got a lot of great words. You're the version that you bring to us the next meeting may have a few extra phrases and we can say two or three of those three are good enough. We don't need all three, you know, but I really think that trying to do it together on anything is, is very hard. And I, I think we've got an understanding, a clear understanding. It is the first question. Why this? Why now? Okay. So, um, um, do you all agree with number one now? I don't like it, but if you all agree, then we can move on. Um, Dorothy? I agree. Okay. You ask. Okay. Um, and uh, so I moved, when is the sponsor hoping to present to TSO up to the timing and um, so we just have a question of do we want to uh, this the next red section was me just trying to make things a little less complicated and less wordy um, so that's just that's all that is about I mean it's not it won't, wouldn't it wouldn't hurt me horribly to leave it in but I just don't really think it's necessary. Any what thoughts? What sentence are you talking about? The, the only other, the red section here, and may need to be altered if this proposed measure is adopted. I think it does imagine an alternative that is possible that is different from the other two. So it, it, it doesn't strike me as, as redundant. Um, it is wordy, I agree, but I think it could be left the way it is. I don't know how others feel. Is that, Evan, is that agree with George? Thumb? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, again, all of this could be more concise, but this is, you know, five people copy editing. But yeah, I think it's fine. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs> What's not a pretty sight? Five people copy editing. <laughs> My color coding. That's uh, quite, I like the color coding. Your okay. color coding's beautiful, Darcy. We all liked it. It uh, wasn't too bright, but it was clear. That's good. I'm just having Oka flashbacks. I don't know about Evan and Alyssa, but <laughs> having Oka flashbacks here. And, and we survived. In fact, often we went through this and it was painful, but good things came out of it. So I agree, time is important. Dorothy's right. Um, we, we need to get through this. Okay. Um, there is a, there is a, we do get some good, even though it's painful at times. Okay, so I added in um, on C the words have or, because obviously we could already have information as we did in our practice preliminary presentation. If, if I already have information, then I will present it. And so I'm going to assume that no one is objecting to that. Okay. Um, and then, oops, wow. That was a cool. hand up and maybe it's residual, Evan? Yeah, no, it's current. Um, I, I have no issue with the word have being in there. I actually um, I confuse, think we need to take the word need out because three is all about um, what in it, it's information already gathered. So this is the collection of information we have. So C and D both have the word need, but it, but for this is already, it's current information. That is true. 
All right, so four is about additional information that we need. Um, so uh, it's just the same categories from staff, from stakeholders, best practices. Um, any, any, well, I guess we can look at everything, not just the yellow. We can just look at that for A through D and see if there's anything you want to change. Hand up. Oh, sorry, Dorothy. Okay, I'm going to just go back a second. Um, under number three, the word need is used many, many times because we're using it as a noun. And then when you use it as a verb, it's just one too many needs. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that um, on number C, change it to have and may have to be altered um, because there's just too many needs. I, there's one, two, three, four, there's five needs in this particular paragraph but they're not all the same part of speech. I mean, all right, I'm getting nitpicking, but do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, what existing bylaws, policy plans, or goals addresses this need or fail to address it and may need to be altered? I think, let's get rid of that, may need to be altered. We're using it now as a verb and just say, and have to, and may have to be altered. So that's the time, we're gonna use the word need. It can also just be a noun. It could also just be and may be altered. And may be altered, that's better, yeah. Right, just too many needs there. It's too needy. Uh, you asked if we had any questions with four. Um, I don't have any. Does anyone else have a question problem with four? Um, you know, as I look at three and realize what Evan suggested, 3C, we should probably take out and at what point in the TSO recommendation process do we need it? Yeah, in, in 3C and D, actually. Right. I'm taking out or need there. Okay, and additional information. Okay, shall I try ch to change that to green for? I'm going to do it unless somebody tells me not to. <laughs> She's going to change it. <laughs> All right. Now, the next paragraph, um, that I crossed out because it was redundant with step two. Basically, says the same things that step two says. So um, that's why that's crossed out. So this is all, you know, number three and four are all happening during the preliminary presentation. And then the TSO may also offer some initial questions or suggestions for the sponsor to consider. And then the next step 
is the preparation, all the things, you know, the chair, the chair's designee has to go out and do these different things. And then I put the language about the TSO expects to receive the answers to the questions and the information requested prior to the formal presentation because that was that appeared in both all of Alyssa, Evan, and and George's um, uh, language that they were putting forward. Um, uh, Evan. Evan, Evan has his hand up. Yeah, so so I, I can see the. Um, I can see how it's it's repetitive, um, so I understand that. I wanted to reduce that. There is one pretty big difference between the striked out language and step two, which is step two. It says it shall be the responsibility of the chair or chair's designee to assist in preparing the measure by communicating with sponsors, reaching out to the town manager, reaching out to relevant town stakeholders, and seeking input on best practices. So that puts all of the research and communication and outreach responsibility on the chair or chair's designee, whereas the paragraph that's been struck um, says TSO expects that the sponsor will provide answers to the questions and the information requested. And so who bears responsibility for providing that information is pretty dramatically different between what's in step two and the struck language. So I, and I think that's going to be an important thing for us to clarify is if I'm the chair's designee, is it my responsibility to reach out to the town manager and staff? Is it my responsibility to connect with community stakeholders? Is it my responsibility to do the research on best practices? Or is it the sponsor's responsibility? Because that's very different between the struck language and the um, action, the language in two. Yeah, I know that that, that is a point of uh, difference, maybe in this committee and i think you all saw the the email from mandy joe with her um her uh points that she was making about why um why the sponsor will be coming up with a very large portion of the information but uh, may not either be able to or have the responsibility to come up with everything so george yeah, I'm just looking at the wording of the end of step one, what apparently has still been left after everything else was struck, which is TSO may also offer some initial questions or suggestions for the sponsors to consider. And I think that language needs either to be just taken out or, or, or revised. And but it does get to the question you're raising, which is, I mean, exactly what are we asking them to do? And if they don't do it, what are we going to do? Um, so maybe maybe it should just come out completely or it should say something quite emphatic, like um, TSO, uh, it, it, I don't know, if TSO has questions, uh, uh, then it's the, then go back to the language at the bottom of step two, it expects to have the answers to these questions and information requested prior to the formal presentation. Right, uh, I think that's so, the assumption. That but, we, we, we provide, we ask them questions, and then we don't, have a we don't have the next presentation until they're ready with the answers but it raises mandy's question which maybe we'll have to come to next which is you know uh, what if they're not able or what if they just refuse um which is also evan's question which is how much work are we getting ourselves into here why should we have to do all the hard work uh for somebody else's proposal obviously if it's our proposal you know, whatever, but this is somebody comes to us with some something and we have a series of questions that we've presented them and requests for information and they just look at us and say, you know, uh, we, you know, you guys do it. You're the legislators. Um, so what do we do about that? And uh, we need think, to decide that. I think we're saying that we, it, we ask, we can ask them to answer our questions. They will be required to answer them. Um, we, I meet with the town manager before every one of our meetings. Um, so I 
just as a matter of course, talk to him about the upcoming agenda items and what staff input is needed. So I don't think that is a, you know, that's just happens anyway. Um, it, and um, I guess I don't see it as a big problem and that as Mandy Jo said in her email to the, and that's in the packet that people can see if they're watching, um, uh, that sponsors, if sponsors are responsible for, um, for talking to all the potential staff people or stakeholders, they, we aren't going to hear directly from them ourselves. And I actually personally think that it's our responsibility to hear directly from certain stakeholders. Um, so do we want to just hear it secondhand from the, from the counselor sponsors with their interpretation of what the stakeholder said or what the staff said? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Dorothy. Um, I said this before at a previous meeting. We don't have staff. Uh, we are legislators, but we don't have staff. And I think this is taking on much too much. Uh, as I read it over again, um, it uh, is too much. Now, the one area where the chair or the chair's designee does have to do is probably reaching out to the town manager because we don't, we were told that our own access to town workers is limited. And we don't want the public feeling, oh, I was told I have to do this. That means I can go call up anybody I want in the town and get them to do some research for me. So I think that's one of the things that, that has to be done by the chair, the chair's designee. But I think this is, this, is, this is written as if there's a whole research staff. I don't have one. And so this would mean that I would say, well, I guess I won't be the chair's designee because it sounds like this is um, you know, as much work as uh, taking a college course or designing one. So I think it's too much. Of, of, of step, just indulge me here, of step two, A, B, C, and D, um, what, what looks like too much work for us to do there? Well, first of all, seeking input on best practices from other towns, that's, that's research. Um, I certainly can see that a, the chair or the chair's designee gives the people who've come before you some help. Let them know what the process is. Um, help them make contact with the town manager and the and this relevant staff. But um, I think it's up to uh, them to do it. Now, if this is something coming from us in the committee, um, I mean, George and I are gonna have to do a lot of work um, on preparing the Lincoln Avenue and the parking thing. And George, I don't know if you got my voicemail saying that we need to set up some meetings to get started on that. Um, that's something that I'm going to do, all right? I will do whatever work is necessary on that. But I can't say I'm going to do whatever work is necessary on 25 other proposals that come in from other groups. Um, I think that's up to the, the responsibility is on them. Uh, Alyssa. I agree with Dorothy and I don't, I would prefer that you not oversell your meetings with the town manager because your meetings with the town manager are not just about, I mean, obviously they're so that you can help organize the work of the committee, but you cannot communicate to the town manager what questions the committee has about a proposal if we've never seen the proposal. And you would not be making a decision with the town manager to have Anthony come in and talk about procurement when we've never even seen the proposal. That would be something you would have at a later meeting with him. So um, I, I think that we, we can't just depend on on that contact as being, which I felt like that was what we were being told, that that's what that meeting served as that purpose. And in fact, we didn't have any procurement information given to us as a committee and it all worked out and it's all going to get solved in the end but it, the rest of it is i agree with dorothy um george was that oh you i i'm thinking i'm taking my hand down let's let's uh, see if we can resolve this i um 
I still feel that that sentence, I don't know, mothers can weigh in at the end of step one, I find difficult to really understand what it's saying and maybe it's just me. Um, I think what it's trying to say is that we may have some initial questions for the sponsor or need for information from the sponsor and we would like or we would expect or we would require that these questions be answered, information provided uh, prior to the formal presentation. That would seem to be a sentence that would make sense that could go up at the end of step one, or we just strike that whole thing, including the sentence that's still there, and just go to step two. The issue of what we're responsible for and what we're not is a much larger question. Right now, I'm just focused on that sentence at the end of step one, and I'm just struggling with why it's there, and maybe it's just me. Um, I just find it to be not very helpful, or, or you know, should we tighten it up, or should we think, you have people think, happy with it and leave it as it is? I think it's there because of it's, part of what would happen during the preliminary presentation so it's a time thing you know it's like everything under the preliminary presentation so during the preliminary presentation as part of the discussion we would um either come up with questions then or decide how we're going to uh, uh gather our questions for the sponsors to consider or to we don't have to say consider we could say to answer um, consider sounds a little weak <laughs> um, but I guess I I would just like to say that I feel like our rules of procedure set out the way in which counselors and others can submit bylaw proposals and that I actually think that our committee does not have the ability to constrict that and make it any more rigorous than what is provided in our town council rules. Um, so I am very strongly opposed to um, saying that counselors um, have to do more than uh, what the rules say they have to do to submit a, a bylaw proposal. Uh, Evan. So, so I'll address George's thing and then um, two. I think I was the one who suggested putting in that may also offer some initial questions. And I think my thought was if we just had some real easy, almost clarifying questions um, that we that we thought of during the preliminary presentation that we'd want to send off to them before they came into the formal presentation, we would do that. Um, I'm not actually sold on it now. I worry that we would get too much. The whole point of uh, the preliminary is not for us to deliberate necessarily the content and the merits, but just to see do we have the requisite content we need to move forward. And so I, I would actually maybe be, even though it was my suggestion, um, amenable to striking that sentence just because I, I don't want us to lead us into deliberation over, over content and sending those questions before the sponsors have ever come to us. Um, with regard to two, I, I'll admit that I, I, I do feel some conflict over this. And one reason is um, if you're the sponsor of a measure, your goal is to get that measure passed and to bring forth the evidence and arguments that you have to support passing that measure. If you go to a town staff member and they hate the idea of it and their response is, this is awful and I would never support it. I, why would I as the sponsor ever want to bring that forward to the committee, right? And it, and it really shouldn't be, in my opinion, incumbent on me to bring information and arguments against what I'm proposing to this committee. And so that's where it can get a little bit tricky is what Darcy said about, you know, if, if we put the um, responsibility on a sponsor and it gets filtered through them, well, if I was a sponsor, I would be inclined to filter out some stuff that might be negative, right? But that's stuff we'd want to hear. Um, on the other hand, I agree with Dorothy that this is incredibly time consuming. We have a lot of work to do. And you know what? If you have a good idea and you want it to get passed, you should do the work to get it passed. It, to me, it's not on me to get, to get all of the information that people need in order to 
um, consider your measure. And so I'm feeling a little bit torn here. I, I guess where I stand right now is using the wage theft example, whereas I think it's actually probably the responsibility of this committee to invite staff to come um, because the primary reason this committee exists is to hear from staff from departments that have to implement these things. So I think we didn't do it, but I think it was our job to invite Anthony Delaney or procurement in and get their opinion. Um, I do think rel reaching out to relevant community stakeholders, though, I'm not I'm not 100% sure if that's our job. And thinking back to the wage theft bylaw, I, I was, and, and I have great respect for the three counselors who brought that forward, but I was, uh, for lack of a better word, flabbergasted that they would bring forward a proposal that mandated inclusion on a committee by the Amherst Chamber of Commerce without ever once having talked to the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. That to me was insane. And so to me, it would be weird for us to invite the Chamber of Commerce to our committee or seek input from them on a measure without them having first communicated with the sponsors. And so I kind of think it's on the sponsors to, to connect with important stakeholders. Um, so I think, you know, if we're going down this list, B, I think we should do. C, I think the sponsors probably should do, but I could see an argument either way, especially if the, if the chamber would have hated the wage theft bylaw, that, that's tricky. D, I think, is 100% on the sponsors. If we want more information on best practices or how it's worked, I think it's on the sponsors to bring that forward. So again, feeling conflicted, um, but that's sort of where I'm standing right now. So we're... Um, do... Uh, okay, George. Uh, you're muted, George. I'm sorry, thank you. Um, I would suggest we strike um, the entire paragraph. So I agree with Evan that sentence, I would like to see that sentence come out and that whole, so everything is stricken. Um, so starting TSO may also offer some da 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 da. I'd like it just taken out. And then down below, it does you know point out that if we need information, um, we will communicate to the sponsors about it. So, and then we tell, tell them that, you know, we expect to have it before the formal presentation. I just like to take that sentence out. And is there, and can you explain that, George? Um, part of it, I just don't like, I mean, I, not to insult Evan. Evan is a very, very fine uh, master of language. So um, I, he won't take this personally, I'm sure. But um, we may also offer some initial questions. Um, and I, I just either reword the darn thing or just get it out of there. Um, uh, you you know, it? Yeah, I'd like to give it out. Uh, is everybody okay with my taking that whole paragraph out? That was easy. We don't need it because if we have a question, we'll ask it. Well, it's in the next section anyway, so. Um, um, okay, do we um, have any, we're just looking at step two now. So, um, Evan suggested that he's okay with A, B, and C. Is that correct, Evan? Uh, I'm okay with A and I think B, I think that C and D, uh, I need to hear a little bit more about whose responsibility it is to bring that, to reach out and to bring that information forward. I can, I think D is the sponsor. I think C, I could argue it both ways. Well, um, a, of course, could be interpreted to mean, to, I mean, if, if, if the committee felt that sponsors needed to reach out or to, needed to do any of this stuff, whatever information they, that we think they need to get, we could include that in A, correct? Um, so that's, you know, it would be, I personally would like to leave this somewhat loose and flexible so you know that we can interpret it the way we want to um 
so, and I agree that um, best practices are usually, you know, like 95% of the time are going to be what the sponsors are going to be wanting to put forward. Um, but I can see where we might want to, you know, we might say, some other town that we know is doing something similar and we want to look into what they're doing. Um, so I just think that it would be good. And I, that's why I put in some cases. So it's not anything that we are required to do. We can just, you know, it's just optional. So, um, is there? There are hands up. Yeah, hands up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dorothy. I don't like the words. It shall be the responsibility of the chair or the chair's designee. That's pretty strong statement of who's in charge and who has to do it. So I don't want to leave it as it is. I have to agree with Dorothy and Evan. I'm just going to step in here with my hand up. Um, A and B do seem to me to be clearly the responsibility of the chair or the chair's designee. Now, maybe Dorothy doesn't agree, but I, I think Evan's saying A and B are things that um, the chair or chair's designee is responsible for attending to. Um, but C and D are really problematic. With C also, there's the issue of who gets to decide who the stakeholders are. Right now, apparently, it's the chair of the chair's designee, but um, shouldn't the committee have a say in this? Shouldn't the committee and its, you know, say, well, we should also consider X, Y, and Z, and then it's the responsibility of the chair of the chair's designee to go off and, and, and reach out to X, Y, and Z? Are we just leaving that on the chair of the chair's designee's shoulders? So um, this we is being somewhat loose. The, Dorothy's correct. This is very specific. Chair or chair's designee must do A, must do B. If they're doing C, do we have a say in this as a committee or we just leave it up to them or do we even want them to do C and D as well? Um, well, D is, we don't have the issue of, of deciding who's a stakeholder and who isn't, but the question then is, do we want uh, them to have to go off and do research? And um, I, I'm somewhat concerned about the, the workload and da 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 da. So um, what about C and D? I would just say that we, have incorporated this in the preliminary presentation. So what is being done in step two is just a follow-up from what we just talked about in the preliminary presentation. So we went through all these things. And, um, and so we're having this discussion on number, number step one, number four, additional information needed. So the whole committee together is deciding, okay, so what, additional information do we need from town staff and what additional community stakeholder input might we need and then then after we have that whole discussion of all the different things you know is there a need to learn any more best practices than the sponsors already are telling us about well maybe not we're perfectly happy with finding out about these two towns that are in the in the you know fact sheet that we got from the sponsors that's adequate. We're not, we don't need to look any further. So then step two is just the, whoever is taking responsibility just takes all that information from the preliminary presentation that the committee already directed them to do um, and takes, does, you know, next steps. Um, I think it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and um, does that make sense? Uh, George? I think you make an excellent point, um, Darcy, that, that step two, as it is written, is based on what transpired in step one. So what is happening in C and D is informed by what we, the committee, have done in step one. So, right. it, and so your, your point to me is that 
you know, this is not saying, we could make it a little bit clearer, but you make an excellent point that step one is taking place. Now step two is based on what happened in step one. So it's not the chair, chair's designee going off and now sitting in a corner somewhere and pondering who are the relevant stakeholders here. Your point is that that's all been hopefully discussed by the committee. And based on that discussion, they now have clear sense of where they're supposed to go, if anywhere. And the same with D, if the committee in its first step finds that we really should consider best practices, blah, 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 then the chair, chair's designee has their assignment. But if not, then basically they're just doing A and B. Right. Um, yeah. Yes. So Dorothy, Dorothy step two is just following from the preliminary presentation. Dorothy has her hand up. Oh, sorry, Dorothy. They're all important things to be done. I'm quibbling with the phrase, it shall be the responsibility of the chair, the chair's designee. So um, the, we all agree these steps need to be taken, but as to who does what when, uh, the committee, the sponsor or whatever, each case may be different. I just think it's too rigid. So that's why I'm protesting about it at length. I, okay, that's it. What, what is the alternative, Dorothy? Uh, perhaps saying following following up on what has been done in step one, these items will be looked into. Something very vague in general that gives us a lot of leeway. Every case is different. Every group is different. But the, if you say the chair and the chair's designee will do all of these things, you know, why make it so complex and state every step? You know, first you put your foot in the floor, then you lift up the other foot and do it. I mean, just say, these are things that, that will, 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 are part of step two. I, I guess I sort of feel like someone does have to be responsible for, because I, I don't know how else we would do it. Um, if I may. Um, I agree with Darcy that um, we have to have a clear sense of what comes next. And what she, at least my understanding of what she just said uh, for me, is that whoever this, this poor soul is in step two, <clears throat> whoever the chair's designee turns out to be, should have a very clear sense based on step one as to what they knew, need to do for A, B, C, and D. And, and if they don't, they should speak up and get clarification from their colleagues. And it shouldn't be a major research undertaking. It's just we need somebody to prepare this for a formal presentation. It shouldn't always be the chair. Um, and whoever it is, they should attend to A, B, C, and D. If they have a question about C and D, they need to raise it at the, at, at the point that we're at and say, okay, what do you guys mean by community? You know, what do you, what, you know, if they don't understand, or maybe they should just state, okay, these are the stakeholders that I'm gonna reach out to. Um, but I agree, we have to have somebody responsible and they need to know exactly what they're responsible for. If you all feel that this is asking way too much of an individual, then I guess we need to have that further discussion. It is asking uh, something for sure, but it does seem to me it's defined clearly by what we've done in step one and shaped by that. So it's not amorphous. It's not like, okay, George, go out and, you know, you, you know, reach out to the community stakeholders that you think are relevant and then get back to us. It's based on what we've just been talking about. You, you have to go reach out to A, B, and C or nobody. And if, if I'm unclear about that, I'll ask you. I'll say, is this the consensus? You want me to reach out to A, B, and C? And if they say yes, then that's my job. Uh, if they say no, then phew, good, C's out. I have to worry about it. And D, the same thing, you know, if it's clear from the discussion that there's a sense on the committee that we really need to look at best practices from other towns, then I, I'm going to have to do something about that. Um, and so I, I agree with Darcy that it, we need to be clear on what we're asking people to do. And it's, it's, it's shaped, I hope, by step one. And if it's not, that person should be asking a lot of questions before they leave the meeting. And it should be clear to everybody what we're expecting that person to do. Um, otherwise, it, it is just, you know, it's amorphous and who knows what will happen next. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to have a clear sense of what's going to, you know, we want the formal presentation to be effective. 
and not to be a waste of our time. Um, and somebody's got to do it. Okay, thank you, George. Why don't we take one more comment from Alyssa and then decide what we're going to do with step two. Um, and then it's going to be eight o'clock, FYI. Um, Alyssa. So I'm following more the discussion than the words on the page. And so maybe someone can simplify this for us based on the words on the page. But I feel like I'm hearing Darcy say, it's really obvious that it's going to be what's within the, the, the previous section and it's not going to be a dumping ground. I'm hearing Dorothy's concerns loud and clear because I share them completely that we don't have a research staff. So maybe the way of splitting the difference is to somehow make reference to the fact that it is as directed, something along the lines of as directed by, dis, by the committee. Because what I don't want there to be any possible confusion about is like George just said, well, we'll decide before we leave the meeting. It's like, yeah, sure, George, we'll do that. Um, yeah, we've had great experiences with that in real life. That happens a lot that people leave meetings and don't know what their responsibilities are. So we're trying to do better and better all the time. And I also don't want it to be the chair has assigned someone to do things and they feel like they have to do them because the chair assigned them to. If we're making, if we're saying it's supposed to be clear that it's what the committee wants, right? That the committee said, reach out to these three groups and, the com and you said back to them, are you serious? I don't have a research staff. And they're like, no, nah, man, all you have to do is talk to these two people. And then you say, okay, this is based on direction of the committee. It's not just, there's an assignment and you're responsible for everything. It's again, so much of this is based on what the committee has directed the members to say. They're not just getting assigned by one person or by magically just guessing what they're supposed to do. So it's not amorphous. So is there just some way to make that connection to the previous, you know, as discussed by the committee at the meeting or something along those lines? What we don't want, for example, is we don't want somebody getting emailed a week after the meeting saying, I thought you were doing these six steps and them saying, oh, wait, I don't remember that conversation. So, right, we're trying to get clarity. So can we add some clarity about how it's connected and how it was based on the work of the committee? Yeah, I mean, you, so you could strike, it shall be the responsibility of the chair and replace it with at the direction of the committee following the preliminary presentation, comma, the chair or chair's designee, something like that to, to clear. Perfect. The yeah, I, I balk at the word at the direction of. Um, no, I would say no to that. But based on, well, how about just based on the- Two of us just said it's a good idea. Why would you immediately balk at something that two people just said was a good idea? Um, <laughs> there's the episode. Yeah. Three people. Um, yeah. It's the issue with the word at the, at the, the phrase at the direction of, I'm trying to understand. Uh, I think that would not, why don't we just say, we had already actually discussed earlier saying, based on the, um, based on the, the preliminary presentation discussion or something like that. But that's still, can, can you articulate what, what your, your qualm is with at the direction of? I'm just trying to understand that. Uh, it's too, too directive, too directive. Um, I mean, it's, it's directive enough that, that um, it says it shall be the responsibility of the chair. But um, so, yeah. Well, uh, let, let, me, let me pose a question then, if I can, to the committee, because I think that the direction of it, it narrows what the chair and chair's designee should do, and maybe that's what you're having an issue with. But I guess I'm curious if if the committee decides in the preliminary presentation, the stakeholders that we think we should hear from are the Chamber of Commerce, the bid, and Antonio's Pizza. Should the chair or chair's designee feel the freedom to also talk to Miss Saigon and Peter Pocket, or really should they only be talking to the three people? Because that that would differentiate the direction of versus based on is we're directing you to talk to these people and that's who we expect you to talk to. Whereas other language 
could imply that they could say and go, you know who else I should probably talk to? Or you know who would be a good person to get their opinion? Now, Mandy Jo uh, addressed this. Did you see that in her letter? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, she, uh, she addressed this issue and said that um, uh, individual counselors may, you know, want to opt to, to, she gave the example of, of contacting UMass about the wild animal bylaw. Um, so um, I, uh, I guess I would, you know, we're going to be talking about the stakeholder outreach separately from this. So it's, this is kind of part of that conversation. Um, but uh, I obviously every counselor has the freedom to reach out in their individual and counselor context to anyone they want to. Um, so I'm not expecting, I'm not planning or expecting to do that. But I think that um, that to be suggesting that the committee is wants to restrict the counselors on the committee from co contacting whoever they want to is not, you know, doesn't make sense to me. Um, but, uh, but I do think that it makes sense to talk about the preliminary presentation, the agreement that we came up with at that, uh, you know, during the preliminary presentation, because that's sort of like our group agreement of what we're going to do. That's sort of like the baseline. And that is what, I, what if, I'm, if I'm responsible, I have to do that. Why are you shaking your head, George? Well, well I, I have my hand up. And if I may, um, we work uh, by consensus. And I, I really feel strongly that um, you, you can talk to whoever you want. But um, this is a committee. It's not, and and we're trying to uh, put together a presentation that we all have uh, input in. And it seems to me that um, that whoever gets to do a, I mean, A and B depend on somebody else. It's C and D, and I am uncomfortable with the thought that you know whoever this person is can just go off and talk to whoever they want to. Um, and, and, and somehow they get to define who the community stakeholders are. I mean, they can talk to whoever they want, but as far as the formal presentation goes, um, they should be guided by the consensus or by the, by, by the committee as a whole, um, not just told, okay, go off and you know, you know, talk to whoever you feel like you want to and then bring them back. Um, and the same with best practices. Um, I do feel that this should be, I like the suggestion of adding um, the, the phrase now is out of my head, but whatever it was initially, at the, uh, at the direction of the committee, it shall be the responsibility of the chair, the chair's designee to do the following. Now, A and B are straightforward, I think. C and D are not. And I think that at the direction of the committee makes it clear to whoever that person is, that they can't just go off and do whatever they darn well please. Um, you know, as far as, as what we expect in the formal presentation. So if all of a sudden a bunch of stakeholders appear that we've never had any discussion or talking about, I would have a real problem with that. Um, it's based, as you said, I thought quite appropriately on step one. All that should come out, I think, in step one. And uh, in step two, then, uh, it should be very clear where you're going and to whom you're going. Um, and if you want to talk to other people about it, fine. But in the formal presentation, um, this is what we're expecting, and it's at, you know, the guidance or discretion of the committee, not at that individual's own sort of, you know, well, gee, this is what I want to do. Uh, it's not a committee of one. Evan. Yeah, so, so I, I agree actually with everything George said, and as we're having, I offered the at the direction of sort of uh, haphazardly but now that we're having a discussion about it, I actually think it's important for that reason. Every counselor has the freedom to talk to and get feedback from and input from whoever they want. But in terms of actually soliciting feedback that then becomes part of the formal presentation, part of the package of information, um, it doesn't seem like the chair, chair's designee should be able to just talk to 
whoever they want to. It seems like there's value in us as a committee, as a group of five people talking about who we think it's important to hear from and having a, a list that we then say, okay, now get this information. But to say, here's the people we want to hear from, but get information from whoever you want, I, I think is, could actually be really problematic. I mean, especially I'm thinking in terms of, let's say I'm really opposed to a bylaw. I might just go out and, and talk to stakeholders who I know will be super and individuals who I know will be super opposed to it so that I could stack the deck with input from oppositional stakeholders, right? I mean, there's, it seems like the benefit of having a committee is the idea of getting multiple people's perspectives and building some consensus. So um, that I, I'm actually more supportive of that language. And if we feel like we need to vote on it, we can do that because I know it's getting late. So um, I, I think that it would be, I think that it, it really, really doesn't feel good to add that language. Um, and I would ask that we, it's fine with me to put in something like, um, based on the, the, um, based on the preliminary presentation discussion. So that that would, that would include uh, what the committee agreed on in the preliminary discussion. Um, right, but I, I'm looking to actually restrict what the information we get from the committee, uh, from the designee to only what the committee tells them they want to get. Why? Because uh, I think that's important. I think it's important that we as a committee come to an agreement as the body that's deliberating this as to whom we want to hear from um, and, and not necessarily just be surprised when the packet's posted about who we got input from. I think that's important. I know I find it to be a very, uh, you know, very unfriendly and I would request that you not put that language in and just put some some more more um, flexible and more um, um, trusting collegial language in uh, not directing your chair to do something um, or the chair's designee uh, I would request that and so um, you know, it's not, I, you know, I, we, <laughs> this meeting was going along so well. Um, well I'm sorry, Darcy, but that's, you know, and that's kind of the nature of this business is that, you know, you have to listen to other people. I would like to make a motion. Can I make a motion? There's also three hands up right here. Yeah. Um, uh, My George, hand was first. Uh, George, you want to make a motion? Well, I, I, I will yield to Dorothy, but my hand was actually up first, I think. Um, but and I would like to make a motion, but perhaps we should let others speak first. I yield to Dorothy. I was just going to say that I was fine with the idea that uh, the committee would decide what stakeholders or what people should be consulted, but I don't want to limit to say only these people. Um, but I do think that so much of what needs to be done is that a committee as a group of different people from with different points of view gets together, we pool what we know, what we don't know, and out of that comes something which is so much better than having just one person be in charge. So um, I, don't, I don't like things that limit. I want to keep the situation more flexible, and um, that's, really, that's really what I want to do. Okay. And... Um... George. Well, uh, my motion would be very simple to insert the phrase at the direction of the committee at the beginning of that first sentence. And that's how I move. George, read the sentence. The sentence would read, at the direction of the committee, it shall be the responsibility of the chair or chair's designee to assist in preparing the measure for formal presentation by, and an A, B, C, and D. I say. 
Could I comment on that? Or do we, is this well, a formal I need, motion? I need a second, first of all, because it I'll could second. die. <laughs> and if it dies, then we'll go back. I second. Okay, discussion. Okay, I, I wanted to say that I had not liked the sentence, it should be the responsibility of the chair, the chair's designee. We're keeping that in and adding at the direction of the committee, the chair of the chair's designee. So I think the original problem that I brought up is still there. So I, I would like to um, simplify it, not make it so rigid in a, in a hierarchy of who does this and who does that. I don't want the chair of the chair's designee to have to do it all. And I don't want the committee to tell them exactly what to do. So I don't know the language, except that I would just say cut the sentence completely and just say, these are some of the issues that must be dealt with for the second, first step two. Or preparation for the primal presentation will follow up on the initial uh, preliminary presentation and will include. And whether we do some of this or the sponsor does some of this or the chair or the chair's designee does some of this, I think every situation might be different. Um, so it's, are it's you- sounding too much like, okay, I'm getting this model UN feeling. I did not like being part of the model UN. We spent a lot of work and we didn't accomplish anything. I just feel we're getting very rigid here. And so speaking for flexibility. Men, Dorothy? Are you moving to No, I, I am, I'm, I don't, I'm inviting someone else to do so. May I ask for clarification okay. from Dorothy? Um, because I am really struggling with her problem. Um, and it just may be a totally different perspective on what mm -hmm. she and I think the point of this whole process is. I want as much clarity and specificity as possible because this is a basically step one, step two, step three, step four. Mm -hmm. And if in step two, basically what it says is, and then some stuff happens. Well, okay. I need to know who is gonna do what and if we don't want to do it, then we just throw the whole thing out. But um, well, then just say the committee, the committee will make sure that these issues are covered. Every issue is different, George. I understand for one item, we will say, who's going to look at this? Sometimes it'll be the sponsors have already done it. Somebody will say, yeah, but I want to look at a few other stakeholders. I just see, I think it's impossible to write it down exactly the roadmap. So, and I'm saying that that the way it's written, I wouldn't want to be the chair's designee, would you? I mean, we are on something that's very yes, big. We are. But a, we are. And we B, have volunteered to do that tells, crazy well, I know, but it tells us exactly what we're supposed to do. And it also says that it's at the direction of the committee. So at some point in the process, we are going to be told, or through discussion, you need yeah. to reach out to X, Y, and Z. So it's not like we have okay. to sit there and ponder it. Um, well, I have no problem with at the direction of the committee. Okay, I just, I, I can withdraw my objection, but I'm, I'm just saying I'm feeling it's getting kind of rigid and hierarchical and we can just, and, and I see that as counterproductive, okay? But yes, I think the committee will discuss it and we'll make sure that it gets done. But I think each case might be different, so. Um, um, I asked Dorothy a question again. What I'm hearing is she's she's worried about the workload. Is is what I'm hearing. Is that what yes. it is? is? That essence. Okay, fair enough. And yes. I, I share that, but I don't think and, there's much we can do about it. Okay, I'm worried about the workload, and I'm worried about some of the things that people have mentioned. That there's going to be some power plays. I don't like being on a committee with power plays. I I would like it to be that these are good things to look into, and we will put our heads together and we'll decide who should do it and how we would do it. Um, I uh, was brought up by a couple of people that they're afraid that a sponsor, who could be somebody from the outside, might come in with a biased set of evidence, which we, we would not really like very much. Uh, then there's been some concern expressed that some of us might in fact try to load the deck. I would like to take out the suspicious aspects of the whole thing so that I'm, and to leave it a little bit looser. I, but maybe it's not possible. I, I understand George's point. He wants to make sure that it gets done and he doesn't want it to be wishy-washy. I do understand that. But um, um, I think we're fighting over who's, 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 who's running things and I hope it's the committee is running things. That's really what I'm saying. Um, Evan? 
Yeah, so, and to Dorothy's point, I, I share her concern about workload. And I think that's why um, step one, four is actually really beneficial because what will happen is the committee will decide what's the information we need. And then if I'm the, the chair's designee, I could say, oh, ho hold on guys. That's a lot of information you want. I don't have the capacity to do that. And then I think someone else can volunteer or I always, you know, we can't form subcommittee, well we can, but then we have to post them but I have the ability to reach out to other people, but at least then I know going into it, here's the workload. And if I feel uncomfortable with that workload, I think I should be free to say, y'all, I can't do all that. I need help. Or it's just, can we, do we really need to hear from all those people? And so I think one four really helps me feel a little bit more comfortable with the workload. Cause I have, I, you know, work a full-time job on top of this. And so, you know, I, I'm with Dorothy here on that concern. Um, I do think that I, I understand not wanting limits. I do think that they can be useful when you're sending someone off to do something because what you don't want as a committee is surprises. And like I said, I really don't want to be surprised when I go to open the packet before the formal presentation about who we got feedback from, who we got input from. I want to know in advance who that person's going. And I will say OCA, which experimented with several processes, tried really hard to, to put those limits on. And I think it gave um, the other committee members some confidence in what was happening because we can't see what the the de uh, designee is doing but if we know that we sort of said here's what you're going to do and only that we have confidence in what each other's doing because we know exactly what each other's doing we're not wondering i wonder who dorothy's talking to we we told her definitely talk to the chamber but who else do you think she's we know right and so i think it actually limits sound bad it sounds rigid but i think it helps give a level of comfort and confidence in the remaining members of the committee about what those designees are doing when they're off between the preliminary and the formal. I would just say that um, it is, um, it, you know, I am very, very uncomfortable with that language. I feel like it is a direct um, statement about the committee's lack of confidence in me. And I feel that if you, if you don't have confidence in your chair, that you should offer to nominate someone else to be chair because it's, I, I feel like this is a direct uh, statement that the committee doesn't trust me. So I, invite you to nominate someone else's chair, not necessarily at this meeting, but uh, I am extremely, uh, you know, I, this is the way I interpret that language. So, so uh, unless there are other, um, Alyssa? That, that's not why I'm using that language. I'm using that language because I want our workload to be predictable and just, to, I think Evan explained it really well in terms of also appealing to what Dorothy said, if it turns out it's too much work, we can split it up. You know, it's one of those things where we don't say designee means and only that person, right? It's that that person is responsible, but there could be other people that said, oh, actually I can do this piece of it because I know this other part, but I'll coordinate with you because, you know, we have to do this presentation. It is not in fact appropriate to have individual town councilors from our committee going off to wherever they might imagine would be a good place until after we have fulfilled the expectations of the committee itself. This is not a constraint. It's actually a comfort level that everyone knows that we're working from the same page. Mm -hmm. If we find this is unworkable, if it turns out that it actually does feel confining to people, then we can fix it. But what we're trying to make clear here is that we're working under direction of the committee as a whole. The committee as a whole has to agree to something. Before we leave the room, we know who's gonna do what and what we can expect to see the next time. That has nothing to do with our confidence in you and Chair Darcy, as Chair Darcy has nothing, what, that's not why I'm talking about it at all. I'm talking about it simply as a way of cutting down on confusion. So th please don't take it that way from me. Dorothy. That was the furthest thing from my mind. In fact, if we keep that language in with chair and chair's designee, 
you will guarantee that no one will ever be volunteer to be chair of this committee. So that's what I'm saying. It is too much. So I, I just think that this, you're reacting to something that's not there. This is not what we're discussing. We're trying to find a, a way to talk about how the committee works, how the work gets done, and how we feel about it. It is not to do with challenging the chair. George. So Darcy, imagine that you, you hand something off to me. And as Evan suggested in his scenario, I go off and, and bring a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, uh, community stakeholders that clearly are all, you know, stacked in a certain way. And, and, uh, and you don't know nothing about this until the formal presentation. You come to the formal presentation and, and you know, you trust that I'm going to, you know, you just gave it, left it, left it up to me to decide uh, how, who's the relevant stakeholders and, and who should be invited. And then you show up at the formal presentation and you're just beside yourself. I mean, it's clearly just, it's ridiculous. Um, but what can you do? Because the way it's been set up, you've, you've basically said to this individual, you know, you go out and decide who you want to stay, who you think is relevant and you arrange for them to be before us in a formal presentation. I, I think you would agree that that's outrageous. And so the purpose of this is not to hamstring the chair, but it is to make sure that we are all on the same page for the formal presentation. Then we move to deliberation. And if during deliberation, based on the formal presentation that hopefully we all had input into, and we were all satisfied that, that basically that's the way it was supposed to go, then we could, you, you, during deliberation, it seems to me perfectly appropriate for someone to say, I think that we still need to hear from X, Y, or Z. And, and that's certainly possible, it seems to me, given this process. But we're talking about step two leading to step three. And that form of presentation should be something that, that everybody knows what's coming. I pity the poor person who, who's invited to come to uh, our formal presentation um, when another counselor just lays into them um, because basically they've been ambushed. Um, it, that, and they're, they're being ambushed because the counselor is, is, has been ambushed. Um, we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to make sure that we work by consensus and that at least for the formal presentation, um, we know what's coming. And, and after that, then we deliberate. And, and there, it seems anything could happen. And maybe we'd have to have more, maybe we'd have somebody come back and talk some more. But the presentation, the formal presentation should be shaped by, um, by the committee and its discussion. So that's the purpose of this. this did, we not, did we not already say that um, we would be agreeing at the preliminary presentation about the, the baseline of what we're going to have and that that is that's what's going to happen in step two um so uh paul has a comment to make i just have um i have to excuse myself if there's anything that i that you have questions for me um but otherwise i'll be leaving the meeting oh okay thank you uh, does anyone have a question for Paul? <laughs> I, I have my daughter waiting for me outside, so. Oh, okay, I, great. I, That's a good yeah. thing to be. He's had a very, very long day, please. Thank please. you. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, we're, I, we're supposed to be done ourselves. Well, um, does, does Paul have two cents to, to put in here? Or oh. does he not dare? <laughs> don't, don't put him on that spot. That is... I, I just have to agree that everybody it's really hard to edit things as a group it's it's I just it's just hard it always is no matter what so yeah don't get discouraged all right thanks Paul um okay so we have a motion on the table and it doesn't look like we have any more discussion I've lost the ability to raise my hand to turn my voice on did you I have just, another comment yeah. Dorothy I, I just have the word Zoom in front of me. I've lost the, the apparatus disappeared. Um, I need a bathroom break. Oh, we, yeah. two, two hours. That's, I, you know, that's my limit. So, um, well, we have to vote on this first, Dorothy. Um, so uh, uh, all those. Uh, Can we just clarify the motion on? is only to, is to add to the beginning of the sentence at the direction of the committee, not striking the words, it shall be the responsibility of? 
Is that correct, George? That remember. is the motion. If it insert the phrase at the direction of the committee, that's it. And then everything else stays the same. All those in, or I guess we have to have a roll call. Um, Alyssa? Aye. Uh, Darcy, no. Dorothy? Aye. Evan? Aye. George? Aye. Um, and are we okay with the rest of it? Yes. Uh, I, FYI, I'm going to get an opinion from KP Law whether the committee can do this. What do you mean? I mean, I'm going to ask for an opinion from KP Law as to whether the committee can restrict the, the, the chair in this manner. It's not that it's, it's the chair or chair's designee. You're making this about you, but it's about whoever's responsible for the, this particular measure. No, I'm saying I would like to have an opinion, a legal opinion, about whether a committee can restrict the chair's ability to do stuff. So, um, and I'm just telling you that, that I'm going to do it. So, are we all okay with the rest of step two? And I think that's all we can probably do today. There's a hand up. Um, yes, Alyssa. I'm going to try really hard to say this calmly, but when you say that you feel like you're being undercut to the point that you are going to go off and ask KP Law for their opinion for something, which all of us counselors do not have the ability to go to KP Law to do that. You go to the town manager and talk to them about that as to whether or not you're going to KP Law. You don't just have 13 town counselors asking to go to KP Law about whatever occurs to them. And while you're asking that, that's going to be dependent on how you ask the question is the answer that you get. I don't understand why if the town council doesn't have a question or the committee doesn't have a question that you would feel it was appropriate to use town council in that way and then bludgeon us with the answer. So I'm sorry you feel unsupported, Darcy, but we really tried hard to explain that we're not trying to limit you. We're just trying to be clear on who's doing what at any given moment. So um, I think that we don't want to do the rest of this today. Um, so I guess we can put it on our agenda for the next time. Do we want to look at the work plan or do we want to, uh, to not do that? Okay, I'd like to ask a question here. Um, George, you, this is, can you hear me? Because I, I don't have any apparatus anymore. Yes, um, we can hear you. Okay. so. I, I think that George and I will meet and we'll talk about what we think that we need to do. Um, do we have to talk to the committee? This is the Lincoln Avenue and parking thing. Do we then talk, do George and I then come to the committee and say, these are the, some of the things we thought about we want to do and get your input before we go and do it? Or do we start talking to some of the town people um, on the topic, you know, like um, Gilbert and whatever? So I really need it because we've got a huge problem, project to do, and I will work on it. I will do whatever we have to do, but I want to get started. Well, one thing that I would, um, I don't think I mentioned this before, is that Kathy Shane is interested in the, um, the speed limit issue. And um, it's possible that at right now on the work plan, we have the Lincoln Ave coming up before the speed limit issue. And it's possible that she might be able to get it ready faster. So I guess my question is- yeah. do I don't think to that they're gonna want to, I think what George, George and I were told at previous meetings that we can't just talk Lincoln Avenue. We have to talk about the whole traffic plan in that area. So to me, anything to do with speed limit would have to come either as part of that or after that. 
because you, if you change the speed limit now before we've done the study that we have to do with um, the town staff, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't know, George, what do you think about that? My point is just that she, it's possible that she'll be ready before you guys are, I, but it doesn't matter to me. Um, George? Okay, she might be ready, but I don't think the town would want to do that, that's all, but, but I don't know, that's just a thought. I believe actually Alyssa had her hand up first. Sorry, Alyssa? Uh, just quickly, um, I don't think it matters who's ready first in, in the larger scheme of things. I think it matters what our committee decides our priorities are in terms of what yeah. we're ready to do. And I appreciate the, the frustration and the push pull as to which thing should come chicken egg and all that. But the other thing is it, we are in an awkward spot, right, Dorothy and George, because we haven't had that conversation yet as a committee. So I think that as a committee, looking for direction this would have been an ideal time to say we were thinking of doing xyz we haven't even had the very first you know step of this mm -hmm. yet but before we spend a huge amount more work did you have any suggestions for us because that is in fact exactly what we were just talking about right right so i would like this to happen as soon as possible but so george do you think that you and i have a discussion then we come to the committee to get their input before we proceed? Dorothy, we certainly can do this, but this is why process is so important. And while it is painful and difficult, and it, it puts all of us in, in sometimes awkward positions, process really does matter. Um, I've learned this uh, myself with OCA and with GOL, and we're struggling with process right now. Um, I think we're almost there, but uh, right, we need right. to finally settle this. Okay. Obviously not tonight. You and I can certainly talk. We have, I think, an idea of how things are going to look, but we finally have to vote on this and say, this is what our process is. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a pretty clear sense of what it's going to look like, um, okay. but we haven't decided yet. And I, I, I don't want to get, I, I, we right, have obviously right. a problem with, I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, the chair is, is clearly upset. And um, in yeah. spite of the attempts by four members to try and, and articulate the position, she seems unwilling to accept that. And now she's going off to the attorney to find out if she can reclaim her power when it's not about her power. I know. It's about, I know. So um, I'm not ready to go anywhere with anything until we settle this damn process. Okay. And, um, I'm sorry for the French, but um, uh, until we settle it, uh, this committee is just going to sit here uh, and, you know, just rowing its oars going nowhere. Um, and I think we really, well, anyway, um, you and I can talk individually. But uh, right. we haven't even had a preliminary, we haven't done step one yet. Yeah, you're right, totally right. It seems like, I mean, we sort of set out what is gonna be in the preliminary presentation. So that would be the first thing, right? Just try to gather that information. But um, uh, I, if anybody else has ideas or, uh, other issues that you're th thinking of bringing up for our agenda that are not referrals from the town council, this would also be a time that you could, I, I know Dorothy's brought a few things up with me, you know, off, off the agenda, but um, we haven't had anything that it hasn't been referred by the council, so. I don't, I haven't heard from anybody about any such thing, so, but I just thought some of you might have thought of other things that you either wanted to be, have investigated or, you know, new ideas. Alyssa has a hand up. Yes, Alyssa. I was just going to say thank you for including that at the end of the meeting. I know it's always hard to do that because we're so exhausted by the end of the meeting that it's like, oh, we're going to talk about more work. So thank you for giving us that opportunity. I don't have anything today, but I did want to mention that we appreciate that you got so much material to us ahead of time because I know yes. I have complained about that repeatedly in the past and continue to complain about it at town council. And so you did a great job of getting this stuff way ahead of time. Your color coding was beautiful. Yep. And yep. come on, everybody compliment her on the bike rack. That was a brilliant substitute for putting a <laughs> pin in it or putting yeah. it in the parking lot. It's the bike rack. Okay, okay, that was That's sustainable. I have a question. I can't see any of you anymore. Do you see me? Yes. yes do. Okay, so uh, I will see is the word Zoom and I don't, I'm afraid that if I start messing with it, I'll lose you totally. 
Um, uh, I'd like to add something here. Um, well, I guess I do agree that I thought the meeting was at 9.30, so I was getting really pissed off that all this new stuff was coming. But when I couldn't find the Zoom link at 9.30 and found out, oh my God, the meeting's really at 6.30, it was very nice to be able to go over and read all the stuff and some of the stuff we've had two or three times. So it was, it was a good presentation. Um, I do want to tell people that at the beginning of the meeting, before it started, I was so happy because I came up with an item that I thought was suited us. And it was, that was in our purview. And that was a mask uh, ordinance of some kind. And we found out that the Department of Health is presenting one uh, tomorrow, I guess. Um, or is it tomorrow? Darcy, was that the right date? I believe it's Monday. It's Monday, Monday. when the Board of Health meets. Right. So, but anyway, when I was talking to Darcy um, outside the meeting, I said, I don't quite know what our committee is going to do, but I know it's very important. And we're going to have important things come our way. So that when I thought of the mask thing, I said, yes, that is something, that kind of thing, you know, uh, it'll be done much better, of course, by the, the Department of Health as, rather than being originated here. But we have important business to do. And um, I would like us to do it. And I hope that Darcy does not feel that this was a rebellion against her because it wasn't. It wasn't. It was to get a clear idea of how to proceed and that the best way is if we do a lot of working and sharing with the committee. And I think when Evan said, Hey, at some point, I don't want to, I, I, I'm interested. I will do my job on this issue, but this is too much work. Can we share it? Yes. I think that we can share work and that people will volunteer for the part that they think is really more important. I also agree that we have to get, put our heads together to think about who do we really want to have to, to speak to on this issue. So I think we said a lot of really interesting things and good things, and I think that we're almost done. And I, I hope that we can continue forward under Darcy's chairmanship. I really do. So I do have a question for the committee, and that is we have two things that are coming up. Um, the the long-term pub, uh, public way policy, Lynn asked to put off until the 20th of August. And uh, of course, we have uh, we've heard, you know, we've brought up the surveillance technology bylaw a few times now. Um, neither one of them has had a an actual, you know, formal preliminary presentation. If you aren't counting the last preliminary presentation for the surveillance technology bylaw, so the question is. Um, do we want to, on our work plan, do we want to put a preliminary presentation for both of those things for their, their next upcoming? Or do we want to just like one off and have a, you know, our first, our first uh, well actually second uh, formal presentation of those two things. Um, so, what do you think? Because we can, you know, whatever you decide, we can just put that on the agenda. Well, my hand is up, so I'm going to speak first. Oh, and I apologize sorry. if I step on anybody's toes. But um, we haven't had any formal presentations or anything else because we don't have a process. So we have to adopt a process. We're not ready to vote on it tonight, unfortunately, but we have to adopt a process. Otherwise, it seems to me everything we're doing is pointless. Mm -hmm. So uh, we haven't had any formal presentations because we don't have a process. We haven't had any preliminary presentations because we don't have a process. We need to agree, and I think we're close. I think we're very close. We're close. We're close. I think we have to still look briefly at the, uh, the rubrics, and we, I think there's no desire to do that tonight, I understand. And other than that, I think we're fairly close. But uh, yeah. ideally, we could do it tonight. We could just vote on the darn thing, and then, Darcy, you can start planning an agenda with preliminary presentations, et cetera. But I don't see the point of planning an agenda for a preliminary presentation on a process we've not agreed to. We just agreed to everything up through step two. We have to vote on this, okay? This is not something we just kind of do have. I mean, there's a process that we're supposed to follow. We have to vote. We just had to vote on some language that was changed. And eventually the whole thing needs to be presented and we need to vote on it. Mm -hmm. right. right, as far as starting, you know, having a preliminary presentation, we now know what a preliminary presentation is that we've agreed on. 
And I'm saying no, until no. we actually vote on this, that's not true. I agree with you in, in, in reality, we're probably very, not gonna change it, but until we have a vote, um, it, there's not, it's, just, okay. it's just a piece of paper. Well, yeah, I would disagree with that, um, that we, we have to like completely stop our forward progress and not look at anything whatsoever until we've finished because there's no reason why we can't do an hour of completing our process and um darcy uh, you know i i'm i'm a looser person but i understand that when somebody who really believes in it says we have to finish the process i will have to agree because um i know from my experience in many many other places that when people really believe there ha it has to be tied down then it does so I think we could do it tonight. I have one question about red. You put plans and goals in the first paragraph and on the last page, um, step six under one. And um, I, I guess I don't see how it exactly fits there. So I'm just gonna make a suggestion that we talk about plans and goals later, but that we delete the plans and goals in red in the two places where it is and then put this up for a vote and vote, finish, vote the process in today. When you meet every two weeks, you just don't get anything done. I mean, I just, it's true. I've just come off the finance committee where we, we met twice a week for, for, for forever, but we did get something done. Uh, we've got a lot to do and um, I don't want to start picking this up and talking about it again in two weeks. I, so I'd like to finish it tonight. Um, uh, I don't think we're going to do that unless, if the will of the people says we could do it, we can there, there are hands up. I think that we actually finished with that discussion a while back, and now we're talking about the work plan. Um, so um, any other comments about the work plan? Um, there's no, no, there are no, and <laughs> there's no public here. I think that uh, um, we're actually going to take this up at our next meeting on August 6th. Evan? Yeah, no, all I was going to say is, is one that I, that I agree we should finalize the process, but also that I think that what I'm looking at it right now, because we have steps uh, three, four, five, and six, which should go critical, but we also um, have the we have this CBID stakeholder listed. I mean, there, I think there's, there's actually more for us to go through than a lot of us are thinking about, which is why I definitely don't want to do it tonight. Um, so I think it's worthwhile carving out the entire August 6th agenda to, to just, as much as I don't want to spend an entire, another entire meeting on process and August 6th may or may not be my birthday. Um, I do think it's worthwhile to just nail down the process. And then on August 20th, we can have our, our a preliminary presentation on the first issue where we try out the process. Okay. Um, so, any other comments? All right, where are we on our agenda? Are, is Dwayne hey. still here? Adopting the minutes. Oh. Here, you're adopting the minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the minutes were uh, amended. I don't know if you looked at the minutes, uh, but there was some amending of the minutes to add some language, etc. I'll pull uh, them up on the screen. So, do we? Do we need time to look at them? Do you, does anyone want to make a motion? I would make a motion to approve the minutes of June 29th, 2020. And there's June 15th also. Okay, and June 15th. There's very little in those minutes. Yeah. Do I hear a second? Do you want them pulled up? Uh, good. Do any people want to see the minutes? I'll, I'll second because I don't think anyone did yet. Okay, good. 
Um, any uh, discussion? Uh, so, and there, and that is a motion to approve them as amended, Dorothy? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Alyssa? Abstain. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Abstain. Okay, that's three votes in favor. Um, there isn't any public here to give public comment. Is there any other? Then there's nothing else that I know of. Nothing new that came up in the last 48 hours. So um, let's finish this in the next meeting. It seems like we're, you know, I have to say that it seems like a lot of time spent on a process that was given, handed to us by CRC <laughs> that we could have just adopted. But um, hey, Luca had a process and then we spent five months on the new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that um, there's some very basic problem here, but. Um, I won't go on about it right now. So, okay, um, we, uh, um, I want to, can I say, can I raise my hand? Uh, Cause I, I've had, don't have, I can't do it. I want to make a little comment. When I did my doctorate, my chairman made me do my outline and this went on forever. And I kept amending and changing it. And I said, this is ridiculous. This is, on and on. He said, once you have your outline approved, writing the dissertation, the 250 pages is a cinch, as long as you don't go back in the library again. And he was correct. Okay. So I, I kind of chafe a little bit at the time it's taking to get our process done. But when I think of it as the outline for a, a major work that you have to get it done and it has to be, you know, solid, um, then our work will be fast. We will actually become very productive and if we need to make some adjustments to our procedure, we will do it as a result of our having used it in doing good things. So um, just want to leave on a positive note. You're here. You're okay. here. I, I declare this meeting adjourned at 8.52. See you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>